Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with RJ, and this is Manny. And today, we want to talk about five things we like about 7C Core Rulebook. Uh, both RJ and I are, are fans of the system. And uh, if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to get this game or not, I'm hoping that the information that we share with you today will be uh, will help sway you. The first thing that we love about this game is uh, the world setting, uh, the world of Thea. What's great about 7C is that it's not just a pirate game. I mean, from, from the title alone, you may think so, but it's actually uh, a great combination of, of historical fiction and European mythology. Thea is an accumulation of, of romantic ideals and stories of 17th century Western literature that we see today in today's media, from pirates to musketeers, uh, inspired by the social and political changes of the era and the best parts of the Renaissance, Restoration, and Romantic periods. In the core rulebook, you'll get introduced to mainly the, the major European powers and uh, that are represented in Dia, such as Avalon, which is uh, Elizabethan England with Fae and Adorian myth, myths uh, mixed in. Um, and then you have the all the way up to to uh, their version of, of Russia, so it expands pretty far. And there's there's a uh, great formation of of Montaigne, which is uh, um, uh, France during the with the vibes of the French Revolution, uh, Castile uh, doing the um, fighting against the Inquisition of their version of it. Um, you know, so that that uh, that that flavor of the setting uh, it's it definitely entices me. I, I love Three Musketeers. I love Scarlet Pimpernel. I love all those type of stories. Uh, I love uh, King King Arthur and the stories behind that. And this book gives you um, enough setting materials so that you can. Um, you know, if you want to be a, a do something like Assassin's Creed, uh, this, is, this is the book to go to. Yeah, I bought 7C to use actually as a system for historical fiction in 17th century Europe on Earth. Um, but the setting was really compelling. Uh, the sorceries are super flavorful and very distinct and unique from each other. Um, and the setting, like you said, supports so many different story types. You could do your palace intrigue, you could do wild pirate seas, dark forests with monsters explorations of ruins. There's this ancient unknown race called the Sirnath that have left behind all these mysterious artifacts and ruins. Um, so you can tell a lot of different stories. One thing that really stood out to me in this book that I really enjoyed is uh, the hit point slash wound system that they use. So basically you have so many um, wounds that you can take and there are also dramatic wound points along that line. Um, and heroes can't actually die by taking all these wounds. Um, the only way you can die is if you are murdered by a villain and only a villain. So you can't be taken out by a group of thugs. You can be made helpless by a group of thugs, but you cannot be killed. You cannot be killed in an explosion. You cannot be killed by drowning. <laughs> the only way you can die is if a villain murders you. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this system is that Firearms are especially deadly, and they're not given more deadliness by just doing more wounds. But they also, they always do a dramatic wound when they hit somebody. When a gun goes off, it's a dramatic moment. Somebody's going to get seriously injured. Um, there's an exception to that, of course. If there's a brute squad of no names um, and they're using muskets, then they don't do dramatic wounds. Hmm. Um, so those are the two things that I really liked about this, this wound system. I really like the the hit points, dramatic wounds uh, system that they have in this game because it it allows um, game masters to finish their story. You don't have to worry about uh, total party kills. Um, <laughs> so if you and, and your group are are in the uh, middle of a really good storyline uh, together, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, death <laughs> being a um, uh, death halting um, that process at all. And it lets you as a game master be, throw much more danger at your players without having to worry about them getting all wiped out. I want to talk about book design. I don't know if anyone out there is a, a lover of books. Uh, I love I love books. I love how they're, they're designed and put together. And uh, the, this book is put together much like a history book. Um, 
but like a fun history book. The art's fantastic. Uh, information is laid out uh, perfectly. Um, what's interesting is that most core rule books start with the rules, like how to make your character and 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 how does the combat and skills work. That that doesn't happen till much later in the book. Uh, I think. You get like over a hundred pages in the beginning of just what the world is like. Uh, this is a, a system for role playing, so it gives you all this information in the beginning about the world, um, from uh, what they wore for for clothes, political structure, religious religious structure, um, uh, culture. Um, how do the each nations um, um, view each other? You know, so it gives you a whole bunch of information, um, so that uh, you could. It, it could seep you into, like, it could draw you into the world. The way the information is laid out is setting first, character second, and then additional add-ons last. Um, so it really focuses you in on the setting, which I really liked. It just gives you an overview of all the, of the setting. Um, the stories that they tell in the middle of the, the book really give you the flavor of the setting and also some good examples of how to run certain scenarios. Um, and finally, I love books that have great indexes because it, you're going to be using it as a reference um, and it has a good index, really good index. Um, next thing that I really liked about this rule book is the dueling system. So the way dueling works is heroes can purchase an advantage called Duelist Academy, which lets you choose a dueling style. There's 12 dueling styles in the core rule book. There's additional dueling styles and supplements. And they give you additional options that you can use in action scenes that really are powerful. And they make you feel like a superhero when you're using them because a character with duelist um, styles has the ability to easily face down many opponents at once. So while your, your, your teammates are struggling in one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one combat, a duelist is taking on five or six people at a time and holding his or her own. Um, but watch out for villains who are duelists because they also have those same sort of abilities. And so when a duelist meets a duelist, then it gets a little bit more uh, dramatic. Yeah, I get it. I have to say that my characters, when they have a dueling style, makes the game much more flavorful. Uh, it, it, um, it's, it's almost like a chess match at some points. If you're fighting a villain that has a style either similar or different from yours, you can't just hit <laughs> you have to really think of what you want to use against um either the main villain or even a, a group of uh, bad guys um because you could leave yourself open or you may um you're going to use certain moves maybe once during the battle also um, so you have to really think things through very carefully and i love about that i love that it's not just you know hit and parry or hit and dodge um you know um even i've seen other systems where like you may have like two weapon hat fighting but it's still the same thing just hit hit and and that's it but this is like yeah i could i could hit you i could do a certain move that might do a lot of damage but is that a good idea <laughs> uh, you really really have to think things through and i i love that it's it's um even in in fighting you have to do some role playing do some thinking so my the last point and definitely not my least favorite um uh, making a hero using step zero so making a character stats wise is easy if you look at the character sheet which i'll, I'll show an image of uh as you can see that's very it's a very simple layout to make so it doesn't take very long to do so but we'll, what will take a long time is the 20 questions in step zero so again this game really emphasizes role playing so you'll before you even decide on stats uh the game asks you uh 20 questions about your background um like uh, uh who your loves are what's your religion what nation are you from the way the game is set up is that 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 character will f affect the story directly. Now, now, most systems, like when you do a backstory, like um, not not to pick on Dungeons and Dragons, but in Dungeons and Dragons, you have a backstory. And depending on your dungeon master, it, it may not have any factor to the game whatsoever. There's always that that main quest that your game master, your dungeon master wants you to go through. But it's not like that in 7C. Your backstory will have an impact to the game. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because in some other game systems, it's really up to the game master whether or not the character's backstory is going to impact the game at all. And it's not really enforced by the system at all. Um, it might be something you can put in your character sheet and somebody can use it in the story if they wish. Um, in 7C, it's front and center. The very first step is answer these 20 questions. And there are questions, like you mentioned, 
You know, what did your hero think of sorcery? You know, are they religious? Uh, how would their parents describe them? What are their highest ambitions? So when you start from that point, then you're going to take that forward into the story um, in using um, hero stories, right? So from those, you're going to write your hero stories. And hero stories are the things that you want to do and the goals you want to accomplish for which you get advancement rewards. So it all builds on that step zero. You start off defining your hero, very detailed, what drives them. Then you come to stories and then you come to advancement. So the, the game is rewarding real hero background and interaction. Overall, uh, Seven C is a great system. I hope that those listening um, are intrigued by what we're saying. Um, if you're looking for a system that's not hack and slash, um, that that, it, that has a very strong emphasis on role-playing, and you happen to love things like Pirates or Assassin's Creed or uh, Castlevania uh, or a mix of all three, you know, um, you know uh, this is a great system to check out. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you're swayed by our words. Um, if you have the system and if there's other reasons why you like about it, please let us know. Write them in the comments below. Um, uh, uh, if you have questions about the system, write them below. We'll do our best to answer them as well. Uh, so our viewers, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has been uh, a fun video to watch and uh, stay safe out there. Have a good day.